Well, thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. In today's video, we'll do a very, very quick tour of some of the websites that I use to produce these videos, of course. So in today's video, you will get the pleasure of not having to look at my ugly mug. So how do I actually do the video itself? I actually do use Screencast or ScreenPal. And this is actually a free um, a free site that you can uh, platform your videos. I'm sure many people who either produce videos or know a little bit more about technical stuff will be aware of Screencast-O-Matic. So I use this to do the video itself. And um, yeah, I'm by, by far quite a... Um, I don't really know an awful lot about technical stuff and that is why quite a lot of my videos can be on the rather basic side if I'm being honest. It does frustrate me because I would like to um, add in a lot more than what I do but uh, when it's a one man band and um, you know you're working full time elsewhere as well you don't always have the time to put um, a much more into the channel than what I'm already doing. Hopefully with time, I will be able to perhaps do so, but uh, certainly at the moment it is what it is. But, uh, you know, the channel continues to grow. The views stay up um, in excess of a thousand uh, per every 24 hours of upload. My channel is also approaching 5,000 subscribers. So a big thank you, as always, to those hitting that big red button. It is greatly appreciated, especially at this time of the year. And yes, despite the fact that I work full time as a lorry driver and I do night shift um, Monday night to Friday night into Saturday morning, uh, I, there is still a lot of work put into this channel, a lot of work put into these forecasts, whether it be monthly or indeed summer. So um, yeah, um, I greatly appreciate your support as always. So what channels do I use? Weathercharts.com is a channel that I quite often use. You'll be very familiar with these uh, these charts, of course. Down the side is the different the various models. Then you can select, of course, the diff different region. And indeed, you can select what type of chart, whether it be you know the overview chart, which I quite often refer to, or indeed 850s, snow depth when it comes to the winter time, Cape values, uh, temperature anomaly. So you've got that down the left hand column here. Uh, so quite often I refer to this indeed. Uh, Tropical Tidbits is another site that I use quite often in the anal analyst anal analysis. We'll get there. The analysis tools. You can go into this and check out ocean temperature anomalies here. So you can see sea surface temperature anomalies globally. Uh, as well as that, you can check out the seven-day temperature change. I look at that quite often, as you know. And uh, even the yearly change, what we've seen um, over the course of the 12-month period. So that's uh, the ocean temperature side of things on tropicaltidbits.com. But if you go into the forecast models, and we'll actually have a very, very quick look at this if the model is updated and see what it's shown with regards to... Uh, Europe now over the next couple of weeks. No, it's not updated. Does the GFS ensemble? So if you notice here, I'm selecting these different uh, drop down bars here. Uh, so both the CMWF and the uh, and the CFSV two weeklies are both updated at this moment in time. Hence why they're not showing. So let's have a quick look at August, and you can actually see that uh, we've got a negative over the UK and Ireland here. Surprise, surprise, surprise. That would certainly go with the ideas that I have for the overall summer season. You would expect to see below average, uh, you know, heights. So therefore, above average rainfall. And there you go. There's the rainfall of the latest run of the CFSV2 for the month of August. So uh, yeah, wetter than average August. And you would expect it to be warmer than average. Why would that be the case? Because the sea surface temperatures are warmer. But if you notice here, it is subtly warmer than average north and west. Average, the bulk of England, if you notice here. But of course, with these sea surface temperatures, folks, being so much warmer than average, that is definitely having an impact. It's a possibly enhancing areas of low pressure, the jet stream out with the Atlantic, 
and indeed rainfall. And once you start to wet those soils, which we are, this will be a wetter than average July, by the way. I'm pretty much confident now to say that this will definitely be a hands down wetter than average July. It will, it would have been cooler if it wasn't for the warm sea surface temperature anomalies. Now, quite a few people have said this is the worst July on ever, ever recorded. This is the worst they've ever seen. This is the wettest they've ever seen. Believe me, none of those things are true. This is not the wettest July. This is not the coldest July. And we've got, we've had duller, wetter Julys in the past. So perspective, please. This is not by any stretch the worst. So that's the CFS V2 weeklies for the month of August here. Uh, Meteoseal.fr is another one, of course, I use. This is uh, the, the uh, all important uh, current temperatures for the UK and Ireland here. So again, pretty subdued temperature regime. 23 appears to be the warmest in the south side of the Humber at this moment in time. We've only got 13 at Loch Lascarnock. We've only got the uh, upper teens to the low 20s across the southeast and the south of the UK here. And then, of course, as you go to the Europe view, so if you look at the top here, you can look at uh, various aspects, Europe, current temperatures, uh, kind of upper 30s, looks as if it's the warmest for Iberia. We've also got widespread upper 30s for Greece, Turkey, the Balkans, up into, uh, you know, Romania, Moldova, Ukraine, got some fairly warm temperatures um, to speak about at the moment here. Weather online is another one that I quite like to use. This is the current radar chart, as you can see here. If we just get rid of this advert. And you can see here plenty of shower activity, less so across the bulk of England, Wales, and indeed Ireland. We have got some over the northern side of the, the of, of Ireland here, not so much over Northern Ireland. And Wales is pretty much um, vacant of uh, shower activity. We do have some hit and miss. South Midlands, parts of East Anglia, and down in the south central portions of England, even parts of South Devon, we've got some shower activity. But the lion's share of the showers, as you can see here currently, is over Scotland. And uh, I can certainly vouch for that here in Everton, in just above Inverness, that we've have had plenty of shower activity over the course of, uh, of today here. So we'll go back to the home page, and I quite like looking at the satellite uh, image, if I can find it, that is. And you can see here what the current satellite looks like over Europe. So I want to point your attention to this here because we'll look at that area of low pressure in a little bit more detail um, again. But this is a developing area of low pressure. We've got a jet stream coming in from the northwest. We've got a jet coming in from the southwest. And where that, those two uh, jet streams meet, we're starting to see the convergence of air. So it's a kind of piling up of the, uh, of the air mass. And therefore, we are going to start to see an area of low pressure deepen. So this is one area of low pressure to the north. Here's the secondary system. This looks as if it's going to be the main dominant low. And that low to the north will merge with this low to the south. And it is expected to be quite a deep feature over the weekend here. Finally, weatherbell.com is another website I use. It is a subscription-based website. And I do subscribe to it. But if you look at here, if you click on the maps... Then you look at the CDAS temperature. This is what I often use, especially with the Global Weather and Climate Report, the uh, temperature anomaly chart here. So if we look back, historical monthly averages, and this is the temperature anomaly here for the month of July so far. And we are knocking the door of the midway point of summer. So far, it's playing out well. We'll see how August goes. It's certainly if the CFS V2 is anything to go by August may play out quite nicely indeed also finally we'll have a quick look at that system then developing as we press towards uh, tomorrow because it being the time frame of tomorrow I do want to check this out and look at it because it, it's going to pack quite a punch especially for this time of the year you notice here there's that area of low pressure to the north merging with this uh, main low to the south as that merges together it's going to then deepen uh, we're going to start to see the isobars pop from that center that continues to deepen in strength. 
And of course, the golden question is going to be where is the strongest winds going to be? Looks as if the northern flank, so across Scotland, we've got heavy rain, but also strong winds here on the southern flank. That is likely to be where the windiest conditions are during the second half of tomorrow and particularly into the first half of Saturday. I think the southern half of Ireland, England and Wales will see the strongest winds. Now, a 986 millibar area of low pressure is very impressive for this time of the year. We did see similar lows, by the way, in 2012. We also seen similar lows in 2015. So again, it's not an unprecedented situation, but we could see flooding rain from this event here. Those warm waters surrounding the UK is definitely playing a role in terms of enhancing the rainfall as well as potentially the depth of that area of low pressure itself here. And finally, we'll look at the current sea surface temperature anomaly chart here. This is off NOAA, and this is a, quite a good chart that I use. Again, often with the Global Weather Report, I look at these current sea surface temperature anomalies. So that's another chart and another website that I do use. And of course, Twitter is another site that I use referring to what's going on around the planet. Uh, at any given time uh, so yeah i hope that's helpful to you if you're interested in finding out what websites i use and even a little bit about how i use them overall i hope that like i say has been helpful to you but that area of low pressure is going to bring a spell of wet and windy conditions through at least the first half of the weekend we are going to see some of that heaviest rain potentially pull away a little bit but then we may get a little bit of return flow as that system then pulls away. We are going to see more energy rotate around that center as it leaves the playing field of the UK. We are going to see some very strong winds coming in around the, the, the backside of that low. We may also see some cooler air coming in around that low. You notice here it kind of takes us a, a bit of a dive south once again, according to the latest run of the GFS. Then that system pulls away. But then we are met by more disturbed weather coming in off the Atlantic here, folks. So it's not all, you know, plain sailing. Look at this here. This is Friday next week. Long way out. I get that. But this is Friday the 21st of July. And we're back in with uh, another almost dark board low uh, over the UK and Ireland here. And like I've said, the... Surrounding sea surface temperature anomalies are definitely playing a role, keeping particularly nights warm. Daytime temperatures aren't really much to write home about, but overall, because of that warm water increasing the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, we're going to hold that average above average for the month of July, I believe. It will wind up warmer than average. It will wind up wetter than average for the month of July for the UK and indeed Ireland also. But also the wetter soils that we're now starting to see, that will probably have impact possibly on atmospheric pressure, i.e. low pressure, but also the possibility of uh, subdued temperatures, not seeing extreme temperatures. Dry ground breeds heat, wet ground breeds more evaporation and more energy taken up by the sun to evaporation as opposed to heat. So I hope that's made sense to you. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please like, please share it with your friends and family, and do indeed hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate that. Back again tomorrow for the last video of the work week. And then, of course, it's the all important 50th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report this upcoming Sunday. Plenty of content here to stick around, so please do so. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. See you again tomorrow.